Okay, let's discuss yet another explanation for the mysterious Fermi paradox. The paradox of not seeing any extraterrestrial intelligence anywhere out there, at least as of early 2024. No signs of aliens trying to communicate, trying to conquer the galaxy, or trying to do any of the other alien stuff we might imagine them to do. Like, I don't know, building various Dyson spheres and colonizing star systems, or just happily dancing somewhere out there. And of course, as a result of this, we have a lot of different propositions or a lot of different explanations for the mysterious Fermi paradox. Many of which we've discussed previously in some of the videos in the description, but I actually have quite a big backlog of various topics to cover and various studies to talk about in the next few months. Mostly because there are always more explanations, more propositions and more intriguing assumptions based on evidence we do have. And today we're going to discuss one of these new propositions that was recently featured in Universe Today and actually combines a few ideas that were previously explored by a lot of famous scientists, including the iconic Alan Stern, the famous NASA scientist behind the New Horizons mission to Pluto, and a lot of various discoveries from Kuiper Belt, Oort Cloud, and even various comets much closer to Earth. And so based on his research with a lot of different icy bodies, including Pluto and Charon, he actually made some intriguing propositions in regards to Fermi paradox based on his own beliefs. Which is of course what's explored a little bit further in the paper we're discussing today. The paper you can find in the description below on yet another Fermi paradox explanation with a cute name Fishbowl Worlds. Worlds where in a sense life might be just kind of trapped in a fishbowl, and here we're talking about very intelligent life, that's just unable to do anything about it and possibly does not even know about the existence of the rest of the universe. But in order to understand the reasoning behind this, we obviously have to first understand the discoveries about icy worlds right here in the solar system. And that's where a lot of studies from Alan Stern come into play. And so, for example, based on a lot of research on Enceladus and Europa, today we know that a lot of different objects out there, a lot of moons, a lot of dwarf planets, seem to contain subsurface oceans. That actually includes a relatively recent discovery from Makemake and Eris, objects on the outskirts of the solar system that also seem to contain them as well. And the thing about these oceans and these worlds is really that they provide a lot of protection from pretty much everything, including radiation and cometary impacts, for billions and billions of years. And they tend to exist independent of the orbit of the object in various places in the star system. And so technically, quite a lot of various objects out there, and actually most objects out there, could potentially have extremely similar conditions inside with these permanent liquid oceans and stability for billions of years. And those conditions are what we believe possibly started life on Earth as well, except that our planet did not have icy cover to protect us, and for the most part just had a relatively thick atmosphere and a lot of luck. Our planet is just super super lucky. But on a lot of these other objects, these buried oceans might provide very similar stable environments to what we have on Earth, thus giving life a lot of time to evolve and to even potentially evolve intelligence. And so the assumption here is that these objects possibly exist everywhere, in every corner of the galaxy, and they might also have life inside of them, intelligent life. But the question is, okay, so if this life exists, what exactly is it going to be doing and thinking, and how exactly is it going to be communicating? For example, if all of this life lives in the ocean, it's unlikely to evolve a lot of technology for communication, because communication in water is actually really efficient. So, for example, whales don't really need cell phones. They don't need internet either. They can easily talk to each other across the entire planet by just loudly singing into the water, which carries their songs for thousands of kilometers. And so the need for telecommunication for any ocean organism potentially disappears completely. Which kind of suggests that radio telecommunication would be possibly useless for this type of life. Now obviously radio still carries through the water, so it would still technically work. But here it's the question of, do they need it? Would it actually make things more efficient for them? But that's just a question of communication. What about the question of knowledge or knowing what's out there? Now because we evolved under the night skies and because we always had night skies to look at, eventually with time we started to ask questions about stars. Trying to figure out exactly what all of these are and eventually finding actual physical explanations 
using scientific means. But by being buried in a dark, under ice, chances are some of this life, even if it's intelligent, might never even think about anything outside. Or they would have to first tunnel through the ice in order to see anything and in order to start discovering what's out there. And so here, for any life living inside these icy planets, there are already so many extra challenges. But the biggest challenges come from the idea of space flight, or even just the idea of space exploration. Now, here on Earth, it took a pretty long time for our species to finally figure out how to finally escape the planet and to enter outer space. But eventually, by using multi-stage rockets, and by figuring out the exact mixture needed for rocket fuel, a dream and a thought experiment eventually became a reality. We entered the space age. But what about other planets? And specifically planets that are maybe still kind of Earth-like, but have much more mass and specifically much higher gravity. And this is actually one of the main focuses for this new paper. It identifies a new factor for Drake equation. Here it's referred to as exoplanetary escape factor. The idea based on the escape velocity from planet Earth and the possibility of using rockets to try to escape different planets. With the focus being other potentially habitable or potentially exciting planets discovered in a lot of habitable zones of other star systems, such as the nearby Proxima Centauri b or various Kepler planets discovered in the last few years. Now, many of these planets are what's known as super-Earths, or basically planets that are slightly bigger than Earth and slightly more massive, but many of them are in habitable zones, and a few of them might even contain global oceans. Some of them might be even huge ice planets with massive oceans underneath. So kind of like Enceladus, but way, way bigger. And so by comparing the escape velocity of planet Earth to the escape velocities of these other planets, the overall conclusion is that if there's life on those other planets and it's intelligent and potentially even knows about outer space, most of this life would never be able to escape those planets no matter how hard it tried. And that's independent of what the planet is made out of, where it orbits in the star system, or how big or small it is. Once it reaches a certain point, when it comes to escape velocity, things here become extremely challenging. And so for any planet whose factor of escape velocity is more than 2.2, space travel becomes impossible. No matter how big of a rocket you build, it will just never be able to escape those planets no matter what. And so life on those planets, even if it's super intelligent, would just not be able to space travel and thus would probably lose interest in any space exploration. Basically realizing that since they can never go outside, they might as well just focus on the planet itself, thus completely abandoning the idea of communication with other species out there, or possibly completely losing interest in anything to do with astronomy. Now obviously this is a pretty big assumption, but because it would be physically impossible to leave the planet by any means, species living on these planets might never even think about inventing anything to try to leave the planet. They might actually even believe that it's impossible for anyone to ever leave any planet simply because physical escape is impossible. And that's sort of the main idea behind this fishbowl world proposition. Planets where intelligent species might just not have any means to escape, and so instead they focus on what's inside and what's around them, not so much on what's outside. And because many of these planets might also have some kind of a global ocean, or as mentioned, some kind of a huge ocean hidden underneath relatively thick ice, it only adds to the challenge of escaping these planets. Because now, not only do you have to try to escape the gravity, these aliens would also have to develop specific environments to survive that would potentially include a lot of water inside, which is generally pretty heavy. And so a combination of an aquatic suit with relatively high gravity makes space travel in this case pretty much unachievable. But the question is of course, okay, let's assume that they do exist and that's their challenge, would they still have any need to try to communicate with someone outside? And would we ever hear their signals? Well, as I mentioned previously, because water is such a great conductor of energy and is able to conduct sound really well, any intelligent water species might never really have a need to develop anything more advanced. Which means that radio telecommunication might never be invented because they don't really have any need for it. In other words, these advanced ocean civilizations, despite being super super intelligent, might just not be communicative and would thus never be heard by anyone. And combining this with a relatively thick layer of ice essentially gives us an extremely limited chance to ever discover these species or to ever hear their chatter. 
And so even though this layer of ice protected them for billions of years, it technically also prevents them from hearing or talking to anyone, or possibly even knowing what's out there. Thus, fishbowl worlds. Planets impossible to escape, that potentially host these sheltered civilizations, that technically have no need to leave anywhere or to talk to anyone ever. And civilizations that might never even know anyone else exists. But in order to assess if this is a viable proposition, or if any of this is ever possible, there is really only one way. And luckily for us, we might have some first answers in the next decade or so. That way is, of course, exploring similar objects right here in the solar system, Enceladus, Europa, Titan. And luckily for us, we do have future missions going to all of these objects in order to explore what's going on and potentially find life. And we'll probably have sound results in less than a decade. And so, in about 10 years or so, we might actually know a little bit more about what's going on inside these objects and if life can truly exist under these super thick ice sheets. And if we do find something, in that case, Fishbowl World's idea is not that far-fetched after all. But if we find nothing, yeah, we might have to scratch that one out and possibly start looking for other clues somewhere out there. But we'll actually discuss a lot more in some of the future videos, so make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more. On that note, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.